Hey there everyone, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com. We're gonna continue our theme of big RC submarines. Uh, we got a 148 scale skipjack here to show you. It's a pretty cool boat, let's take a closer look. So like some of the last ones that I've shared with you, this one was actually built originally by a gentleman by the name of Dwayne Hill up in Canada, an exceptionally talented and prolific builder. This particular hull was actually created by uh, Dennis DeBoer of DeBoer Models. And uh, this is uh, very common for people to have if they want a bigger, you know, 48th scale boat. It's about 60 inches, so about five feet long, about eight or nine inches in beam, and there is a ton of room inside for your RC gear. And of course, with it being a fairly large model, it's got tremendous presence on and under the water. Let's take a closer look at how the internals of this boat work. All right, access to the hull is really easy. It doesn't get any easier than this, so you just pull this pin back we pull this pin back, grab the top of the sail, and lift it right off. Uh, taking a look inside there, basically the things to note, you've got the uh, linkage for the uh, bow planes right here, and that's a magnetic connector to the top of the cylinder. And then the other thing is the uh, intake, the air intake that runs up the mast right to the top of this particular periscope here. And that is how the model draws the air in to blow the ballast tank. Now, taking a look at this cylinder, this is a, a scratch built module that Duane uh, has put together, follows the same design methodology as many of his boats do. We've got magnetic couplers uh, on the back here and a, a small intermediate shaft that runs to the uh, propeller. This is a really, really smooth operation prop. It's really uh, quite astounding at, at uh, how well that spins. Um, we got a, an electric motor here. It's underneath the equipment tray, but the big thing to note is a three to one gearbox uh, in there, and that extends the battery life and increases the torque of the motor. Uh, we got an automatic pitch controller here, as well as two servos, one for rudder and one for rear dive planes. Got a low frequency 75 megahertz receiver. I can show you underneath the Velcro there. And then we've got a linear servo that uh, basically is the key to the ballast system. So if that draws back, it opens up the vent, allows the air to escape, water comes in through the holes, the bottom of the tank and the model submerges. Pushing the uh, linkage about halfway forward kicks on the air pump and it'll draw air through this uh, nipple here that's connected to the intake in the top of the sail. And if it pushes all the way to the end, uh, that is when the Schrader valve is depressed and uh, this pressure vessel will evacuate uh, liquid gas into the ballast tank uh, and blowing it out. So if the model's fully submerged and the intake is below the surface of the water, you can still surface utilizing that gas system. And it can also be used as an emergency blow as well. Uh, moving up to the front, you've got the actual air pump uh, in there as well as the servo for the forward dive planes. Whole thing is powered by a sealed lead acid battery and uh, that lives just in the front there. Everything is exceptionally simple to turn the model on and off. You simply plug in power and uh, since we're here, we might as well get that done. I'm gonna turn on the radio. Actually, I'll hold this over here. Plug in power. And uh, in theory, we've got rudder control. We've got stern plane override. We've got throttle. You can hear us how smooth that is. It's beautiful. Uh, and then our forward dive planes right there. And then uh, on channel four, we got the uh, actuation for our vent, neutral, air pump, and the blow for the uh, gas system. I got no gas in that right now, otherwise you would hear it 
working. So, with that being the case, this model is basically ready to go. Uh, just put the lid back on, connect the air hose, and we're ready to go to the pond. So I'm going ahead, put the top back on the boat. Just wanted to show you the uh, actuation of those forward dive planes there. Got some nice throw. Um, and then, of course, the, uh, the suction, you can test that with the, uh, the ballast system. And you could hear that pump uh, change in tone as the vacuum increased off of the uh, intake there. So with that, we'd be ready to go to the pond. Now, we did take this out uh, last week. It performed really, really well. Um, the way that I have this set up is the way that I typically do my boats. And I'm going to say that we probably want to do it a little bit differently for this one due to the experience that I had at the pond. So typically what I'll do is I'll put forward or fair water dive planes on channel two, which is the right stick vertical, um, and that controls your depth. And then the stern planes basically operate autonomously with an override in the back if you want. What I actually found though was that the, uh, these fair water planes didn't really have enough authority over the boat to make it really enjoyable to drive at periscope depth. Uh, and so I actually ended up using the stern planes to keep it at periscope depth and that worked really, really well. Now unfortunately, the channel that overrides those stern planes on the VEX uh, is not proportional. It's a, a momentary three-way switch. So you've only got neutral, full throw up, and full throw down. So what I would actually recommend to the new owner is to swap those channels around, um, put that stern plane control on channel two, and then the uh, dive plane or fair water planes on the override on channel six in the back. But regardless, it was still a ton of fun to drive and it performed absolutely flawlessly at the pond. So let's give you a little footage of it. Hope you enjoy it. We'll leave you with that. Uh, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com. If you like what you see, please make sure you subscribe, like the video. It helps me a lot. I'll leave you with that. Have a great day and we'll catch you next time.